And Flora said nothing for now, but watched endlessly down the glen for her past and future king. The river Ness a blue thread weaving through the heart of town and the red sandstone castle sitting, a hill fort above the stream. And thought this chequered history, this approach to Inverness by sea and the coastal route to land, the Via Regis King's route, the memory of Macbeth. This pleasant seat in delicate air, the birds nesting there, breeding and haunting in wild Shakespearean imagery. Through the gatehouse to the wooden stockade of a medieval secular authority. The hereditary governors of Inverness Castle, the Macduffs, the Mackintosh, the centuries of clans, and Inverness centred early and staunch in the Scottish Wars of Independence, de Murray, the great man. Until Gordons lavished money on their residence, Italian artists in the gallery, the hall of stone and lime upon the vaults 100 feet long, and Mary, Queen of Scots, came knocking at the doors to be refused entry. Mary's squadron of ships anchored in the harbour as the gallants gathered and the clans paid homage and she shopped for tartan, yet the hanged men stayed on the battlements until she left. The occupation by the clans, the doors, gates and windows broken up, the plenishing spoiled, the rich library gone, the tower destroyed and the castle falling into ruins. The troops stationed there, occupied by government soldiers, the Jacobites brief retaking in the 15, yet overtaken once again. Fort George, Hanoverian, the roof flat and leaded, thick walls. Bonnie Prince Charlie left the castle and his cause in tatters, blown up by explosive. His French sergeant hurled to his death across the river. The story of the little dog caught in the terrific detonation. The pretty daughters walking through the ruins of melancholy appearance, an illicit freestone quarry, the martlet birds nesting, hidden once again. A clearance where kings used to be. The washerwoman on the drying green below the old castle site, below where Flora stands today, soon only the cellars remain. But then there is a new town, a new court, a new jail, an age of change and progress, a site for visits of ceremonial reflecting the standing of the county, the innovation of architecture, the reclaiming of prestige of Scottish style. With a generous approach for horse and coaches, the castle turns its back upon the town, reorients itself as a romantic ashlar assemblage of towers, a splendid courtroom, a robing room for judges, jury rooms and witness rooms and cells, under meticulated parapets, round-headed windows and imperial stair rising in this rallying place. And Flora in bronze, gazing down the great glen, watching over the changes, the prisoners of the Crofters' War, Mary Moore singing in the jail, the slow deterioration of the soft sandstone, the installation of the cannon from the Crimea, the flagstaff linked to Sebastopol, the gun from Luz, the police vans, the constabulary, the fire department, the family court, this distillation of our history the travellers and what they see and what that means to them and what a tourist does and the essence that they hear and where we are now with an image of our home and a writer, a national character and more old stories and a castle and a woman watching, always watching down the glen. <laughs>